Off we go for a nice drive to pick up Joy Dunlop, a Gaelic singer who came here all the way from Scotland. Give me a sense of just how important Celtic music is to you. Well, I guess it was my own heritage. My ancestors came from Scotland, and certainly the music came over with them, and I heard it in my parents' house growing up, and uh, I just carried on the tradition. Joy's just finishing up a Gaelic workshop here before we head out to her sound check for tonight's concert. Well, tonight's going to be one of their more Gaelic shows. Um, there's going to be a lot of Gaelic singing and there's going to be some traditional fiddle playing and there's three of us that are over from Scotland singing and some from here. So it's going to be a really kind of international mix, but a Gaelic mix, which is nice to see. Hi, Joy. How are you? I'm Joel, Joy. your driver. Excellent. No, I was here 2003, but I was down in Sydney then. And the first time she came here for an exchange, she was in the middle of getting her degree in Gaelic. The second time, she came here to teach. This is her third time. It's been quite nice even coming back, kind of just getting to revisit a lot of places. We had but what is the appeal of Gaelic to you? Um, I think I came from an area which was very Highland, very Gaelic. A lot of the place names are all in Gaelic. I was brought up going to Cayley's, going to concerts where they sang in Gaelic, and I could kind of sing along with the songs, but I didn't know what they meant. I would always hear people speaking, and I didn't know what they said, and I'm really nosy. I, just, I wanted to know what they were saying, and I wanted to find out what it was all about, so that kind of started it. Joe, you know how to speak a little Gaelic, don't you? Yeah. Go on, what do you know? Tell me. Is it rude? Is it rude? Here we are at the Fire Hall in Christmas Island, one of the more Gaelic areas in Cape Breton. It was always promoted as being a very, very Gaelic area where there was lots of language spoken, a lot of culture, and a very strong link between the two places. So it was interesting coming over to see what it really was like. I think I must have the highest microphone I've ever been in here, I swear. Time for sound check. Well, since you've had a chance to get to know the Gaelic culture mm -hmm. here in Cape Breton versus in Scotland, how does it compare? Um, I think we've still got a lot more speakers. Um, we've got over 60,000. I think they're looking at under 1,000 here. We've really, in the last sort of 30 years, pushed to get Gaelic immersion education. But I think here, most people know of somebody in their family who's still got Gaelic, or they can say a few phrases, they understand. How's your pain? Come on, thank you, be with the show about to start, there are probably more Gaelic speakers in this room than anywhere else on the island right now. It's nice to be able to see that. I think if people really made an effort, they could bring it back so much more, but it is, it's going to be an effort because they've kind of lost it a bit. The Celtic Colours drivers are making an effort. 10% of the money they bring in from selling CDs goes to the Drivers Association, who then help emerging Cape Breton musicians and young potential Gaelic speakers. Well, part of the, the Celtic uh, culture is the language and a lot of the younger people today don't know the language and it gives a, a young person a chance to maybe get some classes in Gaelic and maybe start them off into the Gaelic language. Is I would like to introduce the Milling Singers. At the top of tonight's show everyone here will get to experience a special Gaelic treat. It's called a Milling Frolic. In Gaelic it's called a Woog. This song it goes back to World War One. It's what they used to do when they were shrinking the cloth and they're making the tartans. So they'll have people sitting around a table and you'll have some person who's kind of singing the lines and everybody joins in on the chorus. And that's just very informal, it kind of goes along. singing about when you were leading the milling? It's actually um, a bit of a sad song. It was a man who was out on his own and he was cutting corn. I don't know what he did, he sort of slipped and he took a chunk out of his knee with the scythe. So decided to sit down and take it easy for a wee while because obviously he'd hurt his knee and think about his love. And he was just describing how special she was. So he had a wee bit of an accident <laughs> at the first bit, but then thought about her, so I think that cheered him up. Typical Gaelic song. <laughs> OK. <laughs> little tragedy, little yeah, love. Yeah, happiness at the end. <laughs> Perfect. Now it's time for Joy's moment in the spotlight. This is a walking song from Bada, and it's quite a happy one, but somebody who is just looking about and seeing how the beautiful the island is and watching the boats. Oh, Fianna 
I'm going to try and do a mixture of songs, but one of my personal favourites is the Poor Stubiel. I'm going to finish off now with a wee bit of Poor Stubiel, Gaelic mouth music. <laughs> And this is music that was made especially for dancing. So a lot of times with this music, it's not so much what you're singing in the song. A lot of the time they don't really make that much sense, but it's to do with the sound and the way the Gaelic works. So I'm hoping that, because there's a lot of people here that still do their state dancing and still are used to that, I'm hoping that that will really bring that out and kind of get everybody up on their feet and digging around. All of the artists who performed here tonight are up on stage now for the finale. It's a lovely audience um, who got very involved. They were singing along and they were cheering and they were dancing. So it was, it was a nice night, very informal, which is what I like. Fun. It was fun. I even got a chance to try out some step dancing. The night is still young after all. Festival Club is next on our agenda. Are you ready for Festival Club Girls? It's about time. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> This is where I get to meet Joe's wife, Gwen, who is also a Celtic Colors volunteer driver. This is my fourth year, actually, as a volunteer. How did Joe rope you into this? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about all the good shows that he'd seen, and meeting all the people. And some of these people are famous, and in their part of the world probably have to travel with a security contingent. And here they hop in your van like everybody else, and off you go to your concert, and you know you get to know them on a one-to-one -one basis, and, and it's really interesting. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and there doesn't seem to be any end in sight for that party inside. But we've got a big day tomorrow, so this has to be the end of my Celtic Colors evening. Oh, well. <laughs>